Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with the Shooter's Sandwich. That's right, back in the day, British aristocrats developed the technology to make roast beef sandwiches in compressed wedge form, thereby changing life as we know it. And by life, I mean how fox hunting parties were catered. But anyway, the sandwich was super trendy and I've gotten a ton of requests for it. So despite not thinking this is a great idea, I decided to give it a try. And what follows is that experiment. And for step one, we're going to go ahead and prep the mushroom filling. And we're going to want to mince these up really fine. So to do that, I like to slice them first, give them a rough dice. And once I've cut those up like that, then I'll take the knife and give it the old choppa choppa until we have some fairly finely chopped mushrooms. At which point we're going to toss those in a large skillet with a little bit of olive oil and butter. And yes, I'm going to need you to pour your olive oil in a heart shape. So some oil, some butter. We're going to dump the mushrooms in along with a big pinch of salt. We're going to place that on high heat, and then you know the drill. First we're going to make them wet, then we're going to make them dry. So we're going to saute those on high heat. All that water is going to come out. It's going to get all steamy. I mean, you're barely going to be able to film it. But eventually that liquid's going to evaporate, and your pan will dry out and it will look something like that. And at that point, I want you to turn the heat down to medium, and go ahead and clear a little space in the center. Because what we're going to do is we're going to put in another little chunk of butter. We're going to dump in about a half cup of minced shallots. And we're actually going to create another smaller saute pan in the larger pan, which I believe would be referred to as a panception. And we're going to cook those shallots in the center for a couple minutes until they start to turn translucent. And then we'll mix them into the mushrooms and we'll continue sauteing on medium until everything is very well browned and those mushrooms get beautifully caramelized. And once we get them to that point and they look something like that, we're going to finish this off by deglazing with a couple tablespoons of brandy or cognac or marsala or port or any kind of flavorful old world spirit. And we'll just give that a quick one or two minute saute just to burn off the alcohol. And that's pretty much it. At that point, turn off your heat and season to taste. So I'm gonna add a little bit of cayenne, some freshly ground black pepper. Now one tip here, even though we're gonna taste this now, we definitely wanna taste again when it cools. So set that aside, let it cool down to room temperature, and then taste it for salt, okay? So our mushrooms are prepped and it's on to the very critical mustard horseradish sauce. So we're gonna start with some Dijon mustard, one, two, three, or four big spoons of very hot, extra spicy horseradish. It should definitely burn your nasal passages. I'm also going to add a spoon of mayonnaise to mine, which is not traditional because they didn't have preservatives back in Edwardian England, and they were afraid of dying from food poisoning. But I do, and I'm not, so I'm going to add some. And all we're going to do is mix that up and set it aside. And it's on to prepping our loaf of bread. So you're going to need some kind of round loaf of crusty bread, an extra credit if the crust has a pretty design like this one. And we're going to go ahead and carefully cut off the top 25%. And this is one of the rare times where we're cutting towards ourselves, so be careful. And if you're afraid you're going to hurt yourself, have your kids do this for you. And once we've removed that top, we're going to go ahead and dig out all the innards. We want to pretty much remove everything. There's an old Edwardian saying, if it's not crust, remove it, we must. And after you've removed all the insides, you're going to take your mustard sauce and you're going to saturate the inside of that loaf thoroughly. All right, every single square inch of surface should be covered. Don't forget to get under the rim. And once that's been mustard sauced, our bread shell is done. Although since this is called a shooter sandwich, I guess we should refer to this as the shell casing. Oh yeah, little ammunition humor. So that's prep, we'll set that aside, and it's on to the steaks. So I have two what I thought were large ribeye steaks. They were about 10 ounces each. Although by the time I trimmed the fat and gristle, they weren't 10 ounces anymore. And as I pounded these out into approximately the same size as the inside of our loaf, I realized these are gonna be too thin. And I'll talk about that later when we cut into and analyze this thing. But anyway, you're going to pound your meat, you're going to season it generously with salt and pepper, and we're going to sear that in a very hot pan with a little bit of vegetable oil on high heat, just for a couple minutes per side. Now I was shooting for medium. I like rare and medium rare meat, but not necessarily for a cold sandwich. But the problem was these are so thin that something like this will go from medium rare to medium well in like one second, which is kind of what happened to me. And yes, that's another thing we'll talk about later. But anyway, we're going to sear those steaks on high heat for a couple minutes per side until they're done to your liking. And then just because it's staring at us, go ahead and turn off the heat, put a little splash of water in the pan. And I'm not going to show the whole thing here, but just deglaze that, reduce it down to about a tablespoon or two, and dump those delicious pan drippings into the mushroom mixture. I mean, that's just smart cookery right there. And at that point, we are ready to assemble. All right, so first up, we're going to put one of the steaks at the bottom. I would pick the bigger one. And yes, the meat's still warm. That's actually a good thing. I'm going to stick that little piece that fell off in this layer. And then that first steak gets topped with our mushroom filling. So spoon it in and really pack it thoroughly. 
Okay, use the edge of your spoon to get into those nooks and crannies. And once all our mushroom mixture is packed in there, before we lay on the second steak, I'm gonna add a very special bonus ingredient, pate. Now, of course, foie gras is illegal in California, so there's no way this was illegally obtained black market foie gras pate. And I'm gonna slice up a few ounces of that and lay that over the mushrooms, which I really think is gonna help this go down a treat. So simply lay on those slices, kind of tuck them under. I'm gonna go ahead and cover the surface. And then of course, we're gonna take the second steak, put that on top. We'll top it with our bread lid. And Bob's your uncle, that is ready to wrap and press. Now traditionally, this is wrapped in parchment paper and tied with string. I'm not sure why. But anyway, I'm gonna suggest you simply use some plastic wrap, loosely wrapped. Right, I'm just gonna take two pieces and just kind of wrap it like that. I don't want this air tight because as we press this, we need the air to escape. All right, you don't wanna create a balloon. And then we'll wrap that whole thing in aluminum foil, or as they may call it, aluminum paper. And we'll wrap that up. We'll place that on a sheet pan with another sheet pan on top. And then you wanna weigh that down with the heaviest pans you have. You could use cans of food. All right, those cast iron weights down in the basement that you don't use to work out with. Maybe even a bowling ball. That would be ridiculous, but effective. So I'm just using my heavy cast iron cookware, which did a great job. So pile up as much weight as you can. And then we're gonna to need to press this in the refrigerator for at least six hours, although overnight is recommended. So have your butler Jeeves take that down to the spare fridge and let that sit overnight pressing. And then the next day, we're gonna unwrap it. We're gonna cut it to reveal the inside of a perfectly compressed shooter sandwich. That looks good. I think so, but let's analyze. So at first glance, I really like the appearance, but it's clear and obvious. My steaks needed to be thicker. I need at least 50% more meat. Like I said, I was shooting for medium, which would have been much easier to do if the steak was thicker. All right, parts of this are much closer to medium well. So on the blog ingredients, I'm definitely gonna call for larger steaks than I used. But anyway, we're gonna cut that in the wedges and I'm gonna dig in. Check it out. You got your seared steak there, which works perfectly with those caramelized mushrooms. And as I suspected, the pate really worked well here. Added some extra richness and fat I was not gonna get from that lean steak. So while admitting we needed bigger steaks, I will deem this experiment a success. Although I guess the ultimate question is, would I make this again? And the answer to that is no. No, I wouldn't. And the reason being, if I wanted to enjoy a delicious roast beef and mushroom sandwich, I think I could do a better job using traditional sandwich making techniques. But having said that, if I was a rich British fox hunter, or maybe an American tailgater, or camper or hiker, I could see this working very well. I mean, you could fall down a mountain with one of these in your backpack and it would do no damage. Try that with a BLT. So I will say to a certain select segment of our audience, I really hope you give this a try. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.